that track. I went to the horse racing the other day. Do the horses even know that they're racing? What do they think is happening? Do you think when the race ends, they're walking back to the stable? I was third, I was fifth, I was ninth. <laughs> I'm sure they know that the guy on their back or whoever wants them to get to the end as soon as possible, but they must get there and go, we were just here. <laughs> if this is where you wanted to be, why don't we just stay here? That was the longest possible way to get here that you could have taken. be kept as healthy as a horse. So, how's that leg doing? Uh, great, great, never better. Good. Why don't you try putting some weight on it? Uh, sure. Yes, yes, oh, that's good. That feels good, very strong. Sorry, Thunder, I gotta put you down. How's your leg, huh? How's your leg? You ready to race, huh? <laughs> The Philly, eight bells who had finished second, beaten five links by Big Brown. A heroic effort to, against the Colts. And we're told now that eight bells, the Philly, has been Trying injured. Trying to get some information right now. Uh, well, there she is. Going on the now track ambulance. So, equine ambulance was just headed over Fortunately, there. Fortunately, um, she broke both front ankles and collapsed, lost support to both of them. And so they immediately euthanized her because there was no possible way to save her. And that's an injury that's um, painful. So uh, they, they just euthanized her immediately. right hind leg that was injured you see him holding it up there gingerly and I guess things just weren't right with Barber all, all afternoon they had to saddle him sort of on the fly kept him walking he was bouncing up and down in the warm up and as they made their way uh, toward the starting gate he broke through the gate and then by the stands the first time they pulled him up and I'm sure it's a nauseating feeling 
for all of us, but especially for his connection. Well, We're going to watch a, a replay uh, coming out of the starting gate here. He gets away very, very cleanly, uh, actually much better than he did in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Sweet Northern Saints starts to come over a little bit there. No contact at all, and there's no pro apparent problem at all uh, up to this point. He's in good position. Looks like Edgar uh, is happy with where he's at. Uh, right there, you, oh, you see him uh, take the bad step, and, and uh, you know, this is not a, not a good injury here, and uh, let's just hope that it's something that, uh, uh, you know, can be tended to in the proper way. But, again, uh, Edgar was confident with his position, and thank goodness that Edgar was on him. He's heads up. There's nobody better in the business, and he got him pulled up as quickly as possible. And I want to tell you, when you have an injury on a hind leg like this, uh, it's so difficult. Edgar is actually the, the fourth leg for this horse when that happens. He's picking the horse up, and he is... Uh, Michael Matz immediately sees that there's a serious, serious problem, and uh, you know, it's just devastating. Edgar Prado right there, uh, very, very emotional. Um, with Peter Brett, the assistant trainer, and, you know, uh, this is a, a, a serious injury. Every spring, at the two-year-olds in training racehorse auctions, young thoroughbreds are whipped into sprinting at excessive speeds to impress potential buyers. These events are called under tax shows. Here, buyers are hoping to identify the next Kentucky Derby winner. The juvenile racehorses are forced to run one eighth of a mile in times faster than they will ever run in their future racing careers. This is a story about horses that run for their lives, literally run for their lives. It's about the also-rans, the ones that finish out of the money too many times and become a financial burden on their owners. What happens to them is one of the little secrets of the horse racing business. Every year, thousands of thoroughbreds become somebody's dinner. Steak and sushi served up at fancy restaurants in Europe and Japan.